featuring tough through hardened blades, a variety of katana geometries, and a relatively decent price range, Hanwei Raptor Katana Series has developed something of a gold reputation as backyard beaters. Today I'm going to be doing a kind of short impromptu review of this Hanwei Anakubi Zukuri that I received in a Cult of Athena mystery crate. Now I had originally planned to do a full formal review of this katana, but sometimes plans change and instead this is what we're doing. When you buy a mystery crate from Cult of Athena, usually what you get is munitions grade swords. That is, swords that were had a flaw in them that kept them from being sold at full price. In the case of this katana, I can't find anything like that. This looks to me to be an absolutely perfect example. If you watched my video on the unboxing of the mystery crate, you saw that I had some problems with uh, getting it out of the Saya. I'm happy to say that after the letting the Saya acclimate to this weather, that's not a problem at all. We'll get to that in a little bit. So the first thing that jumps out at me about this katana is the suka length. This is a 13 inch suka if you include the fuchi and kashira. That's long. That is, means that when you separate your hands, you can get more power in the cut because you have more leverage. But, you know, for people who practice Japanese swordsmanship, aka not me, uh, that can be a problem if your school of swordsmanship does not account for such a long suka. So this may not be the best choice for somebody who wants to use it to practice their actual school of Japanese swordsmanship. But the suka is pretty decent. Um, it has the axe handle shape that Hanwei is pretty famous, infamous for. And before getting this katana, I didn't really know what to make of that reputation. Well, now that I've had it, I understand why people criticize it. It's quite wide in this profile and quite thin in this profile. And it leads to a bit of an odd feeling in the cut. I don't feel like I have quite as much control over the katana because my hands wrap around the grip a little bit differently than I'm used to. That said, the Ito, which is suede, is, has a really, real nice feel to it. It's a little bit soft, a little bit squishy, but it has this just really nice tactile feel that keeps the hands locked in place. It does, it's not that tight though. The knots move around quite a bit, although I can't really deform them. So while they move around, they don't just completely deform and end up looking terrible. That said, the diamonds are pretty inconsistent and there's a couple places on here where you can see wood peeking through. But one thing you can tell is that while wood peeks through, the Samaigawa, which is real, is inlaid in a groove in the suka, which is a good thing to see. That's, if you're gonna use Samagawa panels, they should be inlaid rather than just glued on top. There's also a decent amount of discoloration on the Samagawa, especially right around this Manuki. Maybe that's why it was considered munitions grade. To me, that's such a minor detail. I, I didn't even notice it until just now, actually. There are two Makugi keeping the, pit, the suka in place, which, makes sense for a backyard beater. Now, traditionally, a uh, katana would only have one makugi holding it in place, but a lot of modern-made katana go with two just for extra stability. The manuki are these brass raptor feathers, and it's amazing how perfectly in place they are. They don't, there's no budging at all. I can push on them. It's not budging anywhere. I'm guessing they're not just glued in place. I'm guessing they actually are probably pegged to the suka itself to keep it for, keep them from moving. The kashra is iron, has this nice raptor design on it, and there are ledges on both sides of the suka, and they're they're there, but they're barely noticeable. I don't really feel them when using it. And as opposed to the fuchi, there's a noticeable ledge right here, almost none right here. But the actual problem is this raptor decoration. The beak right here actually creates something of a uncomfortable hotspot. If your hand is wrapped around, like sometimes my thumb might end up on it, when I cut and it impacts, it can actually rub against that beak and be kind of uncomfortable. I could even see that drawing blood if I really put a lot of oomph into the swing. The Suba also features a raptor motif, and while there's a lot of cutouts here, they're all chamfered nicely so that I don't feel any uh, 
uncomfortable rubbing. The one spot I might is right here. It's not chamfered quite as well, but even when I butt, bump my, put my hand all the way up against the, the Suba, the way my hand is, it's not connected to that spot. So I don't think it's ever going to be a problem. And in fact, you know, the, of the cutting I've done with it, I've never felt any discomfort from that specific spot. The Saya is a matte black with some glossy specks that really do a good job hiding fingerprints. I can't ever notice any fingerprints on it. But the Koijiri, Kurigata, and Koiguchi all look like they're different materials than the wood, but they're definitely not horn. You know, just tapping on it, it doesn't feel like horn. Honestly, what it feels like is plastic. I don't know for sure that that's what they are, but that's what they feel like, and it's not a good feel. And in terms of, you know, practicing drawing the sword from the Saya, if that is plastic, that's really not offering you any protection, which horn normally does. One interesting thing is that the wood has actually been cut out a little bit here. I don't know if you're going to make that out. That's done, I assume, to improve the fit of the sword to the Saya, which is something I've never seen on a production model before. I like that Hanwei takes that extra step. And it has produced what I consider to be the absolute perfect fit. There's absolutely no rat rattle and draws perfectly easily with the thumb pushing it out. Good job there. Now the habaki fit is actually really impressive. There's almost no gaps on any side of the blade. You can see gaps, but they are less than a half a millimeter wide. That's uh, much better than you would expect on this type of this level of sword. Normally you'll get a habaki that just vaguely fits the katana. This one clearly looks like it was designed for this shape. So the Anakubi Zakuri geometry means that this is going to be a lighter blade. It weighs around two and a half pounds from what I remember. And it features a short bohi that travels about a third of the way up the blade and it's it terminates at the same place that the geometry of the sword changes. Normally with the Shinogi Zukiri, you'd have the spine stay relatively similar thickness throughout the whole blade. There'd be some distal taper, but we're not talking a lot here. With uh, Anakubi Zakuri, it narrows dramatically right at the end of the fuller and creates not a false edge, but a very narrow spine that continues at about the same thickness all the way up to the tip, the kasaki, where it flares back out and is into a reinforced tip. One interesting thing about this specific one is there's a little notch here, right where it flares out. I haven't seen that before. It brings a little bit of eye-catching attention to it. I have no idea how traditional that is, but it's interesting, if nothing else. The Shinogi-G, I believe that's the correct terminology, is perfectly straight and nicely crisp, which again is not all that common at this price range. Oftentimes you'll have katana with where this kind of wavers around a little bit and maybe a little soft and mushy, but this is doing a good job in terms of the blade shaping. And when I say this price range, I should clarify the price range. So these, this sword now sells on Cult of Athena at just under $430. That's definitely gone up recently. I believe these used to be around $350 the last time I looked. So at $430, we have moved out of what I consider to be the budget range, and we're into mid-range swords. The Kasaki, the, it's kind of interesting here. The polish is a little rougher here. On, on the spine, I can actually feel the polish is not nearly as smooth as in different parts of it. The Yokote here is geometric. If I run my fingers along it, I can feel the very slight ge geometry change, which is not very common on lower cost katana. Oftentimes it'll just be a different polish that to create the Yokote. It's not exactly a very big deal functionally. I suppose if you do a lot of tip cuts, it might make a difference. I honestly am not nearly experienced enough with katana to know if that actually does make a difference. So handling wise, Anakubi are generally lighter blades because of that change in geometry. And therefore they're more of light target cutters. They're not really dedicated mat cutters or heavy target cutters. This one is a bit heavier than I'm used to for Anakubi at around two and a half pounds. And that's probably because it's got such a long grip. And the blade length uh, is about 
is a little over 28 inches if I remember, which is pretty typical. But it has a little more authority in the cut that I'm used to for a, an Akubi. Not to say it's heavy, it's not. And it's balanced, you know, right around four inches from the Munimache, which is a good place to be. And it's quite a bit of fun to cut with. You know, the extra handle length means that you get to, you can put more leverage into the cuts, which gives you a little bit more power. And overall, it's a fun katana to use. The sharpness is decent. Actually, I'd say a little bit better than decent, but it's not paper cutting sharp all the way through. You know, I put it in and just start sliding. It starts getting caught a little bit further back than what you actually want to cut with a katana. You generally get cut more up in this area. But even then, sometimes it kind of gets stuck a little bit, like right there, where it kind of, I have to put a little bit of oomph into it to get it to cut. That's not to say it's a bad edge, it's not. That's definitely sharp enough to cut anything that I'm going to cut with. And it's an effective edge, so it's sharp enough to do the job of a backyard cutter without being crazy scary sharp. So now it's time to talk bottom line. Do I think this is worth the roughly $430 price tag? Well, that's a bit of a hard question to answer because I do own a Huawei Anakubi, which sells new for around 300, I believe. And I like mine better than this Raptor in every way. There's, I don't think there's anything I like about this Raptor more than I like about my Huawei. But Huawei has a, a huge problem with delivering their orders and a massive backlog and they're just a troubled company right now and i don't know if you can really trust if you place the order that you'll actually get it in a reasonable amount of time so in viewed in that light this might be the better option for that price for a well executed on a kubi's occurring that's not bad at all in my opinion and that's going to bring this kind of informal review to a close i hope you enjoyed it and until next time Alien 2 out.